Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Primary Care Management Insights. I'm your host, Chloe, and today we're delving into the comprehensive management of heart failure in a primary care setting. This episode is packed with valuable information for healthcare professionals, especially those preparing for exams like the AKT, PLAB2, and SCA. Joining us to break down the steps is the esteemed Dr. Emmanuel Nwogu. Welcome, Dr. Nwogu. Thank you, Chloe. I'm delighted to be here. Dr. Nwogu, let's start by addressing a critical aspect of heart failure management, the review of drugs that may cause or worsen heart failure. Could you walk us through this process? Certainly. When managing a patient with confirmed heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, it's crucial to review medications, identify and stop drugs that may contribute to heart failure. This proactive step sets the stage for a more effective treatment plan. That makes sense. Now, when symptoms of fluid overload are present, what's the next course of action? The key here is to ensure that the patient has been offered a loop diuretic. Titrate the dose according to symptoms, and it's essential to review and adjust as necessary, especially when introducing other drug treatments. Dr. Nwogu, when initiating drug treatments, how does one decide between an ACE inhibitor and a beta blocker? And are there any precautions to keep in mind? Great question. The choice between an ACE inhibitor and a beta blocker involves clinical judgment. For instance, if the patient has diabetes or signs of fluid overload, starting with an ACE inhibitor might be preferred. However, if there's clinical suspicion of significant valve disease, it's essential to consult a specialist before offering an AC inhibitor. Got it. Now, if a patient is unable to tolerate an ACE inhibitor, what alternative can be considered? In such cases, an angiotensin II receptor antagonist, ARB, can be offered. It's crucial to be mindful of dosage, titration, and monitoring, which can be explored further in the prescribing information. Dr. Nwogu, could you share insights on additional interventions when symptoms persist despite optimized standard care? Certainly. If symptoms persist, consider adding a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, MRA, to an ACE inhibitor or ARB and beta blocker. If needed, seek specialist advice and explore options like sacubitril valsartan, SGLT2 inhibitors, ivabradine, hydrolazine and nitrate, or even digoxin for symptom improvement. It's fascinating to hear about these advanced options. Now, beyond medications, what about addressing comorbidities and lifestyle factors? Excellent point. Optimal management involves addressing comorbidities, precipitating factors, and ensuring that causes are well managed. Screening for depression and anxiety is also essential with appropriate follow-up and treatment considerations. That concludes our in-depth discussion on the management of heart failure in primary care. A big thank you to Dr. Nwogu for sharing his expertise. And to our listeners, stay tuned for more insights into primary care management. Until next time, this is Chloe, signing off.